TEDx program my high school was, they're very um, exclusive for high school because there's a different category of TEDx. It's called TEDx Youth. Okay. Um, and no, it, I was really, really lucky to have that just randomly pop up in my high school. I didn't go to my high school knowing it yeah. was there. <laughs> so um, no, I, I jumped on it and uh, it's it program's fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in it for my sophomore, junior, and senior year. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I pitched about different things. I, I talked about music for one. Um, I talked about philosophy. I also talked about education, the, the mm -hmm. theme of belonging. Yeah. And uh, no, it was fantastic. And um, I'm really excited to bring it here to Fullerton now because um, my senior year of high school, I played a leadership role in the development and the licensing of the organization. Okay. So I have a lot of background. And yeah. now I have so many different things going through my mind about where I want the club to go here because mm -hmm. we obviously have vastly different resources. Yeah. And the biggest crux of a TEDx youth program is that you can only have youth. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, now that I'm at Cal State Fullerton, I can invite faculty, professors, PhD candidates, graduate mm -hmm. students, industry professionals, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm super excited and I have a ton of different people in mind. and I'd love to talk about some of them, but they're just absolutely amazing, right? And um, they have so much to offer and that the fact that there's different sales pitches I'm already thinking about where if we were, if I was to starting a TEDx program here with a student body of around 40,000, 42,000, which would make it the largest TEDx program on the West Coast. Wow. Even larger than schools like Stanford, schools like UCLA, and that's a huge pitch. Yeah. Because when it comes to industry professionals, like a senior manager at Google mm -hmm. or a multimillionaire that has his own like management mentorship program, you pitch to them and yeah. man, you want to speak to 42,000 students <laughs> yeah. at the campus with a program this big, mm -hmm. they'll, jump on, it. they'll yeah. jump on it. So I'm really excited to start kicking that off. A uh -huh. ton of different things. What are your, what are some of your like ideas about the program that, uh, you want to implement and right. So, uh, aside from having just these speakers come and speak, uh, my dream is to have the auditorium register. We have a fantastic state of the art auditorium cost tens of millions of dollars to make. So you mm -hmm. might as well put it to use. Right? Yeah. So it holds around 500 students. Mm -hmm. And my plan is beginning of this, of this year, we're going to have uh, this year, we're going to plan to have a program that's only three hours long. Okay. And we're going to have speakers come. They're going to give talks. They're going to love it. There's going to be a little networking thing afterwards. Talk with these like professionals on all these types of stories. Mm -hmm. But after this year, when I have my license established with TED, I have a little bit of reputation with the organization yeah. and what we do here. My plan is to have an all day event where okay. I want to have yeah. people like, let's say instead of three hours for a whole show, three hours for a section, three hours okay. of first generation students, three hours of tech professionals, three mm -hmm. hours of people that have big ideas, philosophical thought ideas, yeah. and then you know, people don't have to stay for the whole show. After every speaker, they go, they come for a certain person. Maybe mm -hmm. they watch their speech, then they get out of the auditorium. More people come in for the next guy. Yeah. People are going to come in for philosophy. And then once the philosophy group exits out, business group comes in. Mm -hmm. And that's why, that's how we'll really integrate thousands of students coming into this auditorium yeah. and watching these professionals. Mm -hmm. And then I, I feel like if I can pull that off, I wouldn't even have to recruit anymore. I want to have people come to me. Yeah. Like I, I want to do that. Like right. I, I want to speak at some event. And Absolutely. Right. So yeah. uh, um, right now I'm still figuring out the logistics of the organization. I've applied for the TEDx license. I'm waiting to hear back from them. Mm -hmm. uh, the license to hold the event here. Um, November 1st is when um, I have to register for student side logistics, like okay. figuring out the club. That's when it opens up. But I've already started holding interview for board positions. And yeah. that's starting actually next Friday, November 1st. Mm -hmm. Right. So. I have a, a room scheduled out in the library. You know, I'm going to have people come in, audition. We're going to have a, around a 12 to 15 person board. Okay. Splitting up the responsibilities, yeah. like sending emails, I recruiting. Because so. like it's a big program to like, you know, you have Absolutely. a lot of people are involved to make it happen. No, right? definitely. It's yeah. not. I, I It would be ridiculous to try and do that myself. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to delegate the work as much as possible. And my goal is to divvy it up in amount enough parts where it's not overburdening for anybody. Mm -hmm. So not for me, we're all full-time students. Yeah. I think um, a majority of the people that are recruited are honor students, they're mm -hmm. business honor students, they're high achieving students, because that's the type of criteria I want. It's someone that's excited, wants yeah. to take the initiative, the hunger mm -hmm. to do to do this kind of thing. So yeah. yeah, no, I'm really excited to hear everybody's pitch and figure mm -hmm. out the roles, absolutely. Yeah, uh, and like you said, you also spoke at like some of these events at your high school. right? You want to speak uh, or you want to tell some of the people about that, like what events? Yeah. So what ideas? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, my sophomore, junior and senior year, I spoke and it was a 
really challenging experience, right? Mm -hmm. I learned from every year, definitely. Sophomore year, it was a, it was a struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, sophomore year of high school is actually my personal roughest year of high school. That's when like I, I started getting a ton of work and I was learning how to manage yeah. it. And at the top of this, I'm giving a speech in an auditorium where it's like freestyle for 10 minutes. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so um, no, like I- the, Like the first time you're uh, like speaking, like even for right. me, like the first time I did this, I was a little nervous too. Like, you know, people yeah. are gonna see this and what yeah. are they gonna think about it? And then after, you know, you just build that confidence up and you just love the process of it. 100%, yeah. you get the feel of the stage. Yeah, my, my sophomore year, I was so nervous. I was having trouble memorizing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the right tactics. You know, my hands were shaky. Yeah. <laughs> so no, and it was, it was but it, it went well, it went well. I put a lot of work into it and the finished product was something I was happy with. But yeah. the next two years after that, you know, I was starting to learn a lot about public speaking, mm -hmm. um, stance, you know, how to move your hands. Cause it's a recorded event that's published on YouTube. Mm -hmm. on a channel that has over 20 million subscribers wow so it's it's ridiculous the type of publicity it gets and that's it's almost nerve-wracking too yeah but um yeah the skills i learned from doing this were